Hi everyone. So last time we got up to the point where Chelsea's mum invited me and Chelsea to the meditation class with her. And I of course said yes, Chelsea agreed, and so off we went a few hours later. The meditation class was being held at someone's house, so we arrived there, parked up, knocked on the door, and we were welcomed in. There was about eight or nine of us overall, if I remember rightly, and um, they were all really pleased to see me, because Chelsea's mum had obviously talked about me in the past. Um, so that was really great, and I got a very warm vibe off everyone. So we sit down, we all have a drink and a chat before we start, and eventually the woman that was um, organising the evening started leading us through a guided meditation. Now I'd meditated in the past before, so I knew what to expect. Uh, well, I thought I knew what to expect anyway. Um, I used to do it a lot as a kid actually, but uh, I stopped during my teenage years. Um, but anyway, yeah, I was kind of, kind of clued in to how to get into a relaxed state and all that kind of stuff. So I slipped into the trance fairly easily. First it seemed like it was just a vision in my mind's eye and it was very vivid and I was thinking, wow, this is interesting. But it just seemed like um, a vision of sorts. It didn't seem um, like I was actually in it, like I was actually fully immersed within the experience. But as I continued to look at the vision, as the seconds ticked on, suddenly I was sucked into it and I entered it as if I was um, actually experiencing it for real. It was absolutely bizarre. I remember thinking, whoa, okay, here we go. <laughs> and um, where I ended up rematerialising was in this crystallised room. It was like a sanctuary of sorts. Uh, everywhere was crystal. The, the, the wall was crystal, the floor was crystal, the ceiling was crystal. Everywhere was crystal. Um, and it felt very holy, this place. It felt quite religious. And I suppose the nearest thing you could compare it to in this reality is a church. So anyway, I end up looking down at myself and I realise I'm in these white robes with my hood up. And as I look around, I realise I'm standing on a crystal stand. And I'm taking it all in and then I look over to my left and there's this other guy standing at the other end of the stand wearing the same attire. And eventually my gaze falls upon what is in the centre of the stand. And it was this massive, long quartz crystal. Absolutely massive. And it was hollowed out. And inside of it laid a woman. And suddenly, as I saw this, a sense of remembrance started washing over me. And I realised where I was. This is Atlantis. This is the last few days before the downfall of Atlantis. I just knew intuitively. This woman that was inside the crystal was dying. And me and my brother, we were trying to heal this woman. We was trying to save her. We were standing on this stand. We were both holding a quartz crystal wand in our right hands. And our left hands were up to the crystal, channeling energy through into it. I remember communicating with him telepathically and we're panicking, we're saying, she, she can't die, brother, she can't die, not yet. She cannot leave this realm yet. It is absolutely paramount that she stays with us. And we're trying our utmost to keep her from the brink of death. And we're channeling from one source um, with the wand and it's coming through the wand into us and then out of our left hands into the crystal and then the crystal is giving the energy to her and I remember how difficult it felt to keep this energy harnessed and focused and how difficult it felt to keep it directed uh, right at the crystal um, it was such a challenge and at this point we realized that we was failing in our mission so we unified to focus the energy even more intensely into the crystal. But whatever we tried, we knew we, we wasn't accomplishing what we'd set out to do. We was failing, we was losing. We knew that the dark side was prevailing and that very soon the dark side would win out and our princess would die. And eventually it dawns on us, it's over, she's dead. 
and we know it, and we feel it, and we lower our left hands, and we tuck our wands back into their sheaths, and we fall into each other's arms, consoling one another, because we knew that was it, it was over. The dark side had prevailed. Atlantis had fallen. Suddenly, bang, I'm back in the room. I'm back in Canada. I look round and I'm disorientated, I'm confused, I'm overwhelmed. I think, what the hell just happened there? What have I just remembered? What was that? Was that a memory? Was that a memory of a real event that happened in my past, in another life? I just was totally, totally overwhelmed and I noticed that everyone else is looking at me in the room and they say, are you alright? And I say, oh yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. I just play it down. And at this point I'm thinking, I need to get out of here. I need to go and think about this on my own somewhere. I need to try and take this all in properly and assimilate it and try and work it all out. And this is the interesting thing because at the time that I was experiencing the flashback, I suppose you could say, I knew exactly what it was all about. I knew the implications of the whole event. I knew what it all meant. Uh, I, I just had that full and complete understanding. But once I came out of it, I still remembered what had happened. But I was looking back at it, like, confused, thinking, well, who was that guy? Or who was that woman? Why was we trying to save her? Why was she dying in the first place? I'd, I'd lost the clarity. I'd, I'd lost the full grasp on exactly what it all meant. So I thought, I need to go off and think about this, you know? I was just so blown away. And so eventually the class comes to an end and me, Chelsea and her mum leave and we get back into the car to go home. And on the way home something strange happened because suddenly Chelsea wasn't Chelsea anymore. It was almost as if her emotions had been switched off for me. In hindsight this makes perfect sense and I'll delve into why exactly this makes sense in later videos. So there I am, sitting in the car in total disarray. I've just experienced this memory of a past life that's totally overwhelmed me. And then at the same time, my girlfriend's acting really strange with me. Really cold and hostile. So I'm just totally confused. I'm thinking, what's going on here? And I remember just thinking, please, if you're listening, just tell me what's going on. Tell me what this is all about, make this clear. And as I thought that, the voice returned to me. And it said, Soon you shall return home, in more ways than one. There you will find your answers.